This famous piano in St. Pancras Station, donated by Sir Elton John himself, has been all over the news this week, surrounded in conversations about free speech, communist propaganda, and supposedly even MI5 are now involved? I doubt it, but the piano has since been cordoned off by police, though I think that's just a case of some awkward timing. What was the piano's crime? Well, it seems to be a key suspect. You know, because piano keys. All right, let's just dive in. My name is Evan Edinger, and I've been living in London now for the last 11 years after moving from the US. And usually I like to upload videos on this channel comparing interesting differences between cultures. And this story ticks all the boxes as there's an interesting thing here revolving around specifically British law that a lot of people I feel don't properly understand. So a few days ago, a YouTuber by the name of Brendan Kavanaugh or Dr. K was playing piano at the St. Pancras station. Now, as someone who has regularly walked through both King's Cross and St. Pancras, this is a very standard thing. People will always play, it adds value, it's nice to walk through and hear someone jiving, doing some bebop songs, that's nice. I myself have played it quite a few times, though mostly just chopsticks. <laughs> the issue here started early on in Brendan's live stream when multiple people wearing bright red scarves and waving Chinese communist flags, who were supposedly making something for Chinese TV, came up to Brendan and asked him not to be filmed. When you are, whatever you're doing, that's oh, your yeah. don't put our face on, on, oh. on, on yes, TV. Yes, yes. Now, this kind of reminds me of that episode of South Park about Harry and Meghan, where they go around making as much noise as possible, going, hey, respect our privacy. Haven't you heard of a thing called privacy? While drawing as much attention to themselves as possible. I mean, if you're going to be waving bright red flags around in a public space and then ask not to be filmed, I don't know, that just seems a bit counterintuitive, similar to that Ricky Gervais joke about someone getting very angry walking through a public square because they see a notice on the notice board saying, free guitar lessons. And they're like, but I don't want guitar lessons. I'm gonna call them up and complain. Or just, it's not for you. That's fine, just move along. But that's not what happened here. We cannot share our images online. Why? Yeah, there's because no reason, why? Why? that's our choice. That's our right. Oh, so it's, it's not a legal thing? It is a legal thing because oh. this is our right that we're protecting and we want don't want our voice, our images okay. to be revealed online. I'm you see, the people that were waving the flags argued with Brendan saying they're just protecting their right to not be viewable online, which is not a right. That That is actually not a right, especially in a public space in the United Kingdom. Because if you are recording us, that when we are saying this, you're still recording, and then we will put a legal action into it. Oh, okay. Yeah. They then go on to say that if Brendan publishes any images of them or records any of their voice and posts it online, they will be putting legal action into it, which, your guess is as good as mine what legal action that would be as no rights were infringed here. I think they were just trying to throw things at the wall and see if he would back down if he didn't understand British law, which clearly Brendan did. He does this for a job. He was very aware of his rights. Now, normally I don't think this type of thing would warrant any sort of international news story, but I think the reason most people are upset about this, myself included, is that when the police were involved, they clearly didn't understand the basics of British law, which is infuriating. That's your job. You gotta protect the law, so you gotta know it. So before we go on to that part of this clip, I think it is really important that you understand the laws that we're talking about here, the rights that we do have in Britain, as there's a lot of spirit of the law interpretations and nuances that I think are very important. So first off, from the Metropolitan Police website themselves, they state, freedom to photograph and film. Members of the public and the media do not need a permit to film or photograph in public spaces, and police have no power to stop them filming or photographing incidents or police personnel. That's important going forward. Yes, this is a right we are all entitled to in the UK, a right that I'm incredibly well aware of because if you don't follow me on Instagram, you might not know I'm a huge fan of street photography. I take street photography all over the place, specifically in London. I like capturing interesting compositions and people in them and just capturing the day-to-day -day life outside. That's something I really enjoy. But nothing is more infuriating than having a nice photo of a nice composition, a nice person in there, and getting a comment saying, Hey, is this legal? Like, okay, grandpa, I understand that sometimes you might get confused with the comment section of an Instagram post and Google, because you could just type that into Google and then find out it is very legal as opposed to leaving a comment. But yes, it is very legal depending on three things. I think it's really important for you to understand your rights not to be photographed in the UK. The first thing that comes into play here is your reasonable expectation of privacy. Let's just say you're in a public park. Well you'd have a reasonably low expectation of privacy. There's loads of people all over the place. Someone could be taking a photo. Uh, there's people everywhere. Public parks, you know, if you're in a train station, it, like in this case, or anywhere really public, you really have a reasonably low expectation of privacy. Whereas, let's just say you're in your private domicile, you're in your home, you have a reasonably high expectation of privacy. That being said, if there is a photographer in the public space, let's say the main thoroughfare outside your house, and they are taking a photo in which they're able to capture you within your home, 
that is a crime because they are invading an area in which you had a reasonably high expectation of privacy. This is why there are a lot of news stories very recently of neighbors putting ring doorbells up and other neighbors getting very angry. Sure, the ring doorbell is filming their own private property, but they're so wide angle, a lot of times they film into the private spaces of the neighbors, which is illegal as that is invading them in their space that has a reasonably high expectation of privacy. And so in this case here of the St. Pancras piano, one would not really have a reasonably high expectation of privacy in a train station surrounding by busy commuters and tourists. It's just not a thing. Now, second asterisk though, is it a public space really? Now, obviously a very CCP friendly topic, but no, it's actually owned by a private enterprise. National Rail currently owns St. Pancras Station. So even though you are in public, it is privately owned. This adds a couple asterisks on what you can do as a photographer or videographer. Like for instance, I've actually had quite a few run-ins with the British Transport Police. At some points in 2023, I visited London Liverpool Street Station, which is one of my favorite stations in the UK because it holds a lot of nostalgic values for me. When I first moved here, that was my hub for university and for multiple years afterwards for work. So I love it. I go there to take interesting photos like this and this and this. However, at some point while I was taking photos, I had a British Transport Police officer come up to me and say, do you have a permit to take these photos? I politely told her, no, because I don't need one. I'm in a public space just taking photos. And she said, well, we, we actually would like you to get one. And obviously this costs money. I have to give up all my information. And so I said, actually, no, I'm, I'm fine. I've gotten enough photos. So uh, I actually will just pack up and I'll just find another place to shoot photos on the A10. She then insisted for a third time, well, well, before you go, we really, just, we want to get your information. I don't know, I just find that really uncomfortable. I legally had no obligation to give her any of my information and I knew that I was not committing a crime, so I bid her adieu and I left the station. I did feel a bit weird about it, but hey, that is an actual important asterisk here. Even though it was a public space, as it is privately owned, if someone asks me that runs the place to stop taking photos, I have to stop taking photos. If at any point I continue, at that point I am committing a crime as it is essentially trespass. And so in the case of Brendan Kavanaugh, no representative from National Rail who owns St. Pancras Station came up to him to request that he stop filming. So therefore he's pretty much good to go. Uh, this is dependent on if there are certain bylaws in that certain station. I know a lot of Crown Parks have bylaws that prohibit specifically types of commercial photography, but from personal experience, I know you're mostly good as long as you're doing everything handheld, but the moment a third leg hits the ground, i.e. a tripod, that's where certain people will kick up a fuss and be like, hey, if you have a tripod, you need a permit, okay? Only blurry photos allowed, okay? <laughs> you got a tripod? Get the f*** out of you. At this point, yet again, Brett Kavanaugh did not break the law in any of these two cases, but we still have one more to go. The other asterisk when it comes to photographing and filming people in public in the UK is intent and decency. Decency is a huge deal. If you are taking a photo or filming people in public and you are planning to take decent photos and video, you are mostly in the clear. But if someone can deem that photo as indecent, let's say you specifically were seeking to catch someone doing something gross and make them look bad, well then at this point you are committing a crime. Uh, as an easy example to understand, I believe, let's just say I was out in London taking some photos of nice compositions, trying to catch people in their day to day. And at some point, a bit of breeze just blew a woman's skirt up and I captured that moment. That's not legal. What I've just done there is taken a photo of someone who had a reasonable expectation of privacy of that private part of her body. Uh, you know, for the most part, that specifically was covered. So the fact that it was covered and she didn't intend it to be that way, it shows that I'm taking an indecent photo. So in that regard, you should not do that. Also, just as a, a quick rule of thumb, don't be a creep. I mean, that's really creepy as a thing to do. As a photographer, we get more than enough shit from people that don't understand the art form and think it's creepy in general. So when in doubt, don't be a creep. Try and take decent photos, not indecent photos. And as another asterisk on this, which I think you'll find quite interesting, it is not illegal in the UK to take photos of children in public, only if they are decent. If even slightly that photo of a child can be viewed as indecent, no, you, you, goodbye. So, but there's an important asterisk. So if you were taking photos of children sledding in the park and it was like, oh, look at this one snowy day in London, you were fine, as long as nothing indecent was occurring. And luckily in the case of Brett Kavanaugh, himself filming himself, like playing piano and it's very good natured, there wouldn't really be anything indecent in this. So the three strikes of how this can be deemed as a crime do not satisfy here. But there is another important aspect here that's not necessarily a legal or illegal battle, but 
If someone comes up to you that you've just taken photo or video of, and they've asked you politely if you could delete it or remove it, for all intents and purposes, you don't have to, you're legally not obliged to, but the rule of thumb is to just do it anyway. I mean, come on, I'm sure you could get some better photos or videos, just wait a little bit. But in this case, he's doing a live stream and he was under no legal obligation to do so. You can request that he delete the photo, but he can also just say no and keep going and actually just give you the advice of just go away, like get off the camera and you don't have to worry about it. Instead, by trying to prevent people from seeing something, Millions and millions of people have now seen the thing. That is literally textbook Streisand effect. But there is a really important little bit here when it comes to the intent of the photo, the intent of the video. If the intent is commercial, i.e. he's monetizing it, he's making videos that are advertised against, so he's able to make money from these public interactions, that's where it gets slightly more nuanced, where hypothetically, that's where a person can come up to you, a representative from the building and say, we'd like you to stop. We do not want you to film any commercial things here. But the intent of that law, the spirit of the law, usually is when you have a big film crew with like nine or 10 different lights and sound and all these people that are causing a nuisance to the public. Whereas just having someone playing piano in a public area and adding value so that people enjoy it, it's kind of a win-win for the property owners who are, you know, people are visiting. They're like, oh, I like this piano. I'll visit St. Pancras more often. Probably. Even then, the main thing, for instance, for me as someone who takes photos, is if I take a photo of someone and they are the subject of the photo, I cannot sell that image to make money unless I get consent from the person in the image. Otherwise, it's fine. If they're in the background, it's mostly in a public space, yet again, because of reasonable expectation of privacy, I'm in the clear. But if I'm zooming in on someone like, look at this interesting person, I better be getting consent for that. And just to clarify, the whole reason these set of laws exist about street photography, about filming in public, is to encourage the art form. It's to encourage the chronicling of what is going on. And otherwise you would just have some person in the background of a video being like, oh, I want the whole thing deleted. I would like this art destroyed. And that is pretty much why we have that law. We're both trying to protect people when they want to be private, also trying to protect people that have people taking indecent photos of them, while also allowing the art form to continue. But in either regard, any violation of any three of these would probably be taken to court and would rely on precedents to determine if an actual crime was committed. I think that's what my solicitor girlfriend would probably tell me as long as she also said, but this isn't my field of law, so please don't put it in the video, Evan. <laughs> All right, so now that you have a firmer grasp of the British law about filming and photography in public spaces, now we'll continue with the story, which does get a lot weirder. Because people were asking him to delete this live stream that he's currently doing, Brendan politely told them he was not going to do that. They can move off of camera and we live in a free country, not communist China. Me too, but we're in a free country, mate. That's true. We're you're not in communist China now, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. This is reasons now. We have no, we're not in communist China. We're in a free country. Now, this very much angered the people holding the flags who claimed, well, this is racist now. Um, I just want to say, I don't think it's racist to say this isn't communist China, especially if you're not in communist China. If I say, this isn't the US, guys, I don't want Americans going, excuse me? That's racist against Americans. It's not. I, I think it's just throwing a word out there to try and get people onto your side, especially considering that further on, he offered the best advice. He said, guys, just move along and you know, you won't have to be on camera anymore and you can go about your days. However, however, when Brendan was pointing to the Chinese communist flag that they were holding, a Chinese flag there. it doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter. Show me the Chinese matter. flag. Why are you touching her? I'm Stop not. touching her. Don't touch her, I please. Touch do flag. not touch her, I'm please. You are not the same age. Please do not touch her. Don't touch her. Please don't touch her. Please don't. Yeah, don't touch her. Don't touch her. At this point, things get really weird because one of the guys just starts shouting, don't touch her. She's not your age. Don't touch her. Don't touch her. Don't touch her. What? What? You, you could say this might be some sort of language barrier, but I would honestly disagree to an extent. At this point, you have a man trying to point to a flag, another one trying to get the public on his side. At this point, he is upset because he knows that he's lost this battle, but he still wants the videos to be deleted. And so he's like, oh, um, what do people in the West get upset about? Racism, okay, that didn't work. What about a pedophilia? So uh, she's not your age. <laughs> Just a weird way of saying it. Don't touch her, don't touch her. Never touched her. Didn't happen at all. We, we have a live stream unedited footage that never happened. Now, as the situation began to escalate, you even had innocent bystanders coming in to share their opinions, which were, why don't you just move along and go off camera and this can all go away? But that was not what they expected. So these people continue to say, this is discrimination against Chinese people, which 
is not the case here. Why are you discriminating a different country? I'm not Why are you dis discriminating a different country? Why are you getting excited? And so eventually the police got involved, which is where I'm the most upset because I really truly would expect the British police to understand the British law they're trying to protect. And so the first thing that the policewoman says when she comes over to Brendan is, well, if we're having a police so matter, we need to, to put them that them down. down. No, we're because I'm going to call this red. This is a police matter, so you can't film us. Wrong. You absolutely can film police in Britain. It is honestly to be encouraged. You have absolutely no legal obligation to not film the police at all. We even have that in the specific website here from the Metropolitan Police themselves that says police have no power to stop you filming or photographing incidents or police personnel. So the fact that this was the first thing that came out of the policewoman's mouth is a bit sus. Either she was just listening to whatever the, the Chinese Communist Party people were saying or she just really doesn't understand the law. Both are really not good looks. Look, I'll talk to you. Not, this is not to go on your channel, my well, This is me talking to you. Well, listen, Kerry, 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 listen, Kerry, listen, Kerry listen, we're in a public space. Listen, let me just have a conversation with sure. you. I'll be this doing in my case. It's, please. Kerry, if you're recording listen, me, we're being recording listen, all the time. Listen, this is, this is going on your YouTube channel. Is, but I need to speak to you without this being on your YouTube channel, Well, what please. about what? Is it public in a public space? Listen, can I just have a conversation sure. with you, please? without your friend video. No, because, because the camera never lies. But the policewoman kept telling Brendan she really wants to talk to him, but doesn't want to be on his YouTube channel, which Brendan correctly replied, well, then I guess you can't talk to me as he has the legal right to film the engagement with the police. She tried for ages to get him to stop filming, but eventually gave in and yet again, clearly didn't seek to understand both sides of this situation, which he has a unedited video from, but instead just told him saying this isn't communist China is racist and you can't say that. It's not. I'm asking you not to film it because I know that you are putting this on your YouTube. Doesn't matter where it goes, we're in a free country. Sorry, we're in a democracy. We're not in China. And that's not racist, that's the truth. That's what our exactly, forefathers fought for. Exactly, but you can't say things like that either. You can't just say things like that. Say what? Like that. that we're in a free country? No, that we're not in China. We've well, got Chinese people. Thankfully, Brendan understood his rights and just kept saying, this is a free country. I can do this. This isn't against the law at all. I'm going to keep playing piano. And eventually things just dissipated. He went back to playing his little songs on the piano, entertaining people walking by and not being a nuisance. Meanwhile, the people that were originally waving the flags gave up after 20 minutes, even though they did have a rushed schedule. Supposedly, the police left and everything was fine until the next day when the piano was cordoned off for maintenance, and now it's open again. But the story gets weirder now that the people holding the flags have shared their story, but just to break this down, if you are in a foreign country, you are bound by the laws of that country. If your country has some sort of weird overarching laws that you have to follow in another country abroad as well, that's your problem, but you still have to follow the actual country you're residing in's laws. That's the law. If you decide to go walking down Oxford Street with a shotgun strapped to your back, don't be surprised when the cops arrest you, tackle you to the ground while you scream, but in America, I have second amendment rights. I'm an American, but you're not in America anymore. So no. If an image of Winnie the Pooh is illegal in your home country of China because your dictator is a bit upset about how similar he looks to Winnie the Pooh, that's, that's his problem. That's your country's problem. That doesn't mean that Winnie the Pooh is now illegal in other countries. But this isn't such an easy tale of good versus bad or like, it, there's so much more nuance here because Brendan has decided to take his story to multiple super conservative pundits. He's even been on Piers Morgan, which ugh, I, I can get the bread, but also have some standards, I guess. Because there are some factions that are like spinning this conspiracy narrative of this was all CCP led and they're trying to remove the rights of natural born Brits and ugh, not, not really. That being said, the conspiracy theorists aren't too far off in that because of these people trying to get this done, multiple internet people have found that the people waving the flags do actually have connections to the CCP <laughs> so it, it, just, it just, it gets deeper. Now, one of the women involved who internet sleuths discovered regularly presents for the Chinese embassy in the UK has made a video on the Chinese version of TikTok defending her actions and sharing her side of the story. Now, she claims that they were waiting for 40 minutes to film a specific segment for Chinese TV at this piano. And if she had just stopped there, I feel like she would have gotten a lot more sympathy from me and others going, ah, oh, a story against influencers, I can bite into that. These influencers, they're just making money, you know, playing the piano, they won't give anyone a try. I'm on board with that, but that's not actually what happened, is it? <laughs> we, we have full unedited footage of what happened. They didn't once bring up, we would like to play the piano, they just said, we don't want to be on camera. She also gave a bit more context for the guy saying, don't touch her, she's not your age, saying he overreacted. 
to put it mildly, I suppose, but he had good reasonings. You see, and this is something I didn't know before this, which is why it's so fascinating. In China, it is a crime to let something bad happen to the Chinese flag when abroad. So if you are a Chinese citizen and you have a Chinese flag with you, you need to make sure that thing doesn't get littered, doesn't get besmirched, nothing bad happens to this flag. So some British man going to touch it, oh God, no, you must protect that flag, otherwise you'll be punished back home in China. That's awful. <laughs> I mean, listen, I'm from the US and we have a religious thing about our flag too. I was in the Scouts. I made a whole video about this specific thing. You can't have the flag touch the ground. If it does, it needs to be like ceremoniously like burned. It's quite elaborate, but I'm in the UK now. And so the, that's not a thing. I know that you get punished in China, but still, uh, <laughs> don't touch her. She's not your age. The flag is probably the same age as that guy, if you think about it. But, <laughs> but at the end of the day, the Chinese Communist Party flag does not have more rights than a British citizen in Britain. I'm sorry if that's hurtful to hear. But then weirdly enough, she claims that Brendan edited the video to remove context so that people would dislike them. It's a live stream. Are you stupid? We, we can see the whole fucking video. You're trying to say in your very edited video where you blur the faces and you make a scary filter on his voice and try and make it look like he was an aggressive racist. You claim that the unedited live stream was, was edited against your favor? Uh, I, I, it, I, come on now, how are you gonna double down on something we have proof with our eyes of? Oh. Okay. The one point that she made that was actually good was that hypothetically, because he's shooting this for commercial purposes, Brendan would need a permit. The thing that I talked about earlier, but that is the case. If someone came up to him and asked him for a permit, then he would have to leave. But you lied so much that I don't think the point really holds much ground here. Then she claims that the police said they would kick him out if they saw him again, which the police have not confirmed. So it just feels weird considering I just, I can't imagine editing a video up and being like, this live stream uh, didn't have the context because he removed it. No, <laughs> no. But for the most part, provided you are not being a public nuisance and you're not creating things that are indecent, you are fine to create these videos for commercial purposes until someone tells you not to. So he's not committing any crime yet again. Thankfully, Brendan really knows his rights and stood his ground, which is good. You should know your rights in the country that you are residing in, very important. Now the guy that shouted, don't touch her, don't touch her, don't touch her, some internet sleuths did find out he works for the Confucius Institute, which receives funding from the CCP. I don't know, man, you're all lying so much, it's hard for me to believe anything you say. And if you just moved it along, nobody would know about this. <laughs> the Streisand effect is so strong. But anyway, do I think this is some sort of covert CCP mission to remove the rights of Brits? No, not really. I've seen some people claim that. You can make a conspiracy theory out of anything. And I know, and I've seen some documentaries about how the CCP have enacted a lot of pressure on specifically the, the educational societies in the UK revolving around the way they teach Chinese. But in this specific case, I think that's too much of a reach. Even though there are multiple people involved here that have connections to the CCP, I just still feel like it's uh, just a bit of a snafu. But in any regard, I do think this has just sparked a really good conversation for privacy laws in Britain and what rights you actually have. So hopefully you've learned a bit more about your rights and also that you should always phone the police just in case. But I'd really love to hear your thoughts on this one because this is just such an interesting topic. And after I made my video last week on the post office scandal, so many of you guys left some long in-depth comments that I felt like I was smarter for reading. So thank you for that. Thank you very much for being part of this community and being so active and helping me learn even more of the topic that I religiously research before making. But regardless of where you live and what rights you have in that country, you could always say, change your location, or at least your browsing location, using today's video sponsor, NordVPN. If you're unaware, NordVPN is a virtual private network. They've sponsored my channel for a long time, and it is the fastest and best out there, and that's why I still use it to this day. It creates an encrypted tunnel for your internet traffic, so no matter what you are saying online, well, no one can tell where you're actually from, thanks to NordVPN. Maybe change your location to India. Maybe ch- no, no, maybe France or something nice like that. I've literally never had a problem with NordVPN and I've used them for like six or seven years, but considering NordVPN has a 30 day money back guarantee, it's a no brainer, especially as it opens up a large amount of content to you as a lot of content on sites like Netflix is region locked. Whereas with NordVPN, you can just change your browsing location and now it's all for you. And if you're just tired of using those really slow ones, you might as well switch to the fastest around. So if you'd like to sign up to NordVPN, go to nordvpn.com slash Evan and get an amazing discount on a two year plan. Thanks NordVPN for sponsoring and let's wrap this up. Hope you enjoyed this uh, middle of the week video. I don't normally do this, but I found this a really interesting topic. So I decided to just throw one in. Who needs to be ahead for videos when I can just film one like this? 
ah, it was one I was having a lot of conversations with friends about. And I was like, you know what? I just want to film a quick video about this. It, but I ended up putting like Phil Light, all these other things around because I am a neurotic man. Anyway, hopefully I'll see you this Sunday for another Reddit video. I will see you then. Thanks for subscribing. Goodbye.